welcome i am working on solar that's this lovely quilt right here it's a block of the month through banyan batik by northcott it's created by bound to be quilting and we are doing month two today so let's jump in and talk about it all right so month two is called memory we're making two of these blocks for this month and here's my first one all nicely pressed and ready to go you can see all the fabrics over here are all cut and ready to go fabric six eight nine seven and thirteen I had no problems cutting anything from the amount of fabric that they gave us, so love love it when they give us extra fabric to, in case we make mistakes. Let's get in and talk about this block a little bit and these pieces. So you can see here in the middle is a square within a square, and we did that back in month number one. So I'm just going to kind of gloss over this block because that's the first one we're doing. If you want a more detailed explanation, head back to month number one because almost the entire block is uh, square within squares. And that's using the fabrics 13 and 9. So let's just do a quick one. All right, the first thing we want to do is we want to cut these fabric number sevens in half diagonally. So we have two of them because we're going to make the four corners on that square. So let's just cut that in half real quick. There we go. And just like the instructions show, it looks a little something like this. We're going to sew the two opposite ones first, press them open, and then we're going to go back and do the other two so that it looks a little something like that in the end. And like I said, head back to month number one for some tips and tricks so you can see what I do over there. Otherwise, I'm going to do this square. We're going to be right back and move on to the next pieces to the sewing machine. All right, so there's that finished block. I've uh, trimmed off the dog ears around it. Remember that wants to measure at three and a half square. I pressed out. Doesn't say any pressing instructions, but that's what I did. If you don't, if you would like to press them open, that is completely up to you. Otherwise, let's move on to the next step. All right, so on the very biggest squares of fabrics six and eight, the very biggest, remember you have, I think, four sizes of squares for that six, the biggest one. We're going to be pairing them up, and we're going to be making half square triangles, only eight at a time. That's right. There's some fancy sewing and fancy cutting happening here, so let's chat about this. In the instructions, it says to draw a diagonal line both ways, and then you're going to be doing a quarter inch seam, a scant quarter inch seam on either side. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I don't like just one line. I like to do all three of those lines the uh, cutting line, which is that center, that's those two diagonals. And then I like to show that half inch mark on either side. So that's what I'm doing right here. There are several of these rulers out on the market. This is the one that I like because it lets me do all three of those lines. Some of them just uh, are a half inch wide and you'll just do the seam lines, but I like seeing all of them. I'll put a uh, a link in the description below so you can see exactly what I'm using and I'm just lining up my slot on those points again the the slotted dash line is the going to be the cutting line and the solid line is going to be my stitch line and there we go so that's what it looks like now in the instructions it says that you want to do a scant quarter of an inch. So that means I'm just going to be just on the inside closer to the cut line by about, oh, by about the width of this pin, actually. What does scant mean? Scant means uh, a couple of threads shy of a full quarter. So I'm going to say about that pin, the width of that pin length. Or if you have a ruler, it's about that width of that 
the lines on that ruler. You, it's important to do a scan because after you cut these, if you don't do the scan, if you do a full scan and you're just off by a smidgen, it's not going to measure out to what we need those half inches, those half square triangles, excuse me, need to measure. So let's just go over this again. Diagonal down the middle and a scant quarter inch seam on either side. So I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to do one, two, three, four seams. And then we'll come back and we'll I'll show the cutting on camera. So I'll be right back. All right, so there's the square and it's all stitched up. Let me turn it over so you can really see the four seams. And then of course there's my dash seam because that is one, just one of the mini cuts we're gonna be doing on this block. So we're gonna be cutting on that middle line both ways and we're actually also going to be cutting halfway both horizontally and vertically and this is where uh, a rotating mat really comes in handy you don't have to do this of course but man does it does it does it make things easier so I'm gonna put my ruler right on those lines and let's do some cutting Right, and there we go so I can separate them a little bit so you can see that they're all there now if you notice as I was cutting I'm really aiming for where those points are meeting up so I make sure I get as perfect a half square triangle as I can so let's talk about this I'll take this away I'm going to press them open towards the dark side um, the instructions don't say it which way to press so if you feel like you need to open it up or if you you know want to go crazy and press towards the light side hey no no judgment here and these guys are going to be two inch square look at that pretty darn perfect i will go ahead and take off my dog ears just because i like to have my blocks all nice and clean when i go towards the next step but that's what we're doing here so Take these to the iron, give them a nice flat press, trim if you need to. Remember, it's supposed to be a two inch square, so if that scant made it a little bit bigger, hey, bigger is better than smaller, right? And uh, I'll come back in just a moment and we'll talk about that next step. All right, so there's the little eight half square triangles. They're going in these kind of these outside corner blocks. But before we can put this together, we have to talk about this block. So we got one more block to make. Let's grab what we need. All right, so we got two big blocks. I have just the one here because I've already done, and then a bunch of little ones, and they're going to go opposite because we're going to be making flying geese, only it's going to be a four at a time flying geese. And in the picture, it shows the pur little purple squares on top of the cream one, but I'm going to do the little cream ones on top of the purple because you'll be able to see all the drawing that I'm gonna do. So we're gonna take that big block and on top of it, in the opposite corners, we're gonna put the two small ones. Now you'll see that they will overlap. And we want that, we want them to overlap. We're gonna be grabbing our handy dandy ruler because we're gonna be making some lines again. We're gonna be doing a diagonal line across the two squares that's on top of that big square. And then we're gonna be stitching on either sides of those lines, just like we did with the half square triangles. So you know me, I like to use my slotted ruler because I like all three of my lines. It makes me happy.
There we go. There, and that's easier to see than if I had drawn it on the purple ones. So I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to stitch on these two solid lines. It's a quarter of an inch away from that middle diagonal. So I'll do that and be right back to the machine. All right, so there's the square with the two seams in it. So I'm just going to cut these in half right on that center seam. And you'll see the next instruction is to press these open. So let me go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so there's our two halves in the instructions. It looks what, like this kind of? So two halves. So let's just use talk about one of them right now. And we're going to grab one of those squares again too. Now we're going to put that square in the last corner. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to grab my ruler and I'm going to put my lines in both for stitching and for cutting. All right, there they are. So we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to stitch on those two solid lines. So I'll be right back. All right, so there's that last seam. Let's do a little cutting down that center. And when we go to press these open, we will magically have two flying geese from this one, and you'll do the same thing with this one. So you'll have four flying geese. Give these guys a nice little press, and then you'll want to move on to the exact same steps, only with the purple on top of that beige color. So you'll do the two, draw the line, stitch, separate, and then add the other two. All right. So now that we got those flying geese done, it's time to put this block together. So let's gather everything. Okay, so we have all of our pieces that we need to put this together. There's just a couple of things we need to focus on next, and that's making these two blocks. You'll see you'll need four of these, one, two, three, four in the corners, and then we'll need four of the flying geese pairs in the north, south, east, west. We'll call those blocks. So let's talk about the flying geese first, since we just finished up with those. You'll notice that when put together, they make one big chevron or arrow. So you'll want to piece these together first. Now when I take these to the sewing machine, I like to have the piece, the point that has the point on it up first because that's where my seam is gonna go. So the seam is gonna go across here and that way I can aim for that crisscross of threads to make sure that I hit a nice point when each of these are put together. So we'll want to do that. And then while I have you here, let's just talk about the corner pieces. You'll want two of the half, little half square triangles that we put together and one of each of the solids, both one of the solid purple and one of the solid kind of you know, beigey beige color or swirl as it were. So we're going to put these together and I like to just pick a pair, the top and the bottom. And once again, it doesn't say a whole lot about pressing, but I like to press in opposite directions typically. That way it'll nest together when I go to put the two rows together. Um, if you feel like opening it up or feel like only pressing to the dark side, that's fine. Uh, just use your best judgment. I'm just trying to give tips of what I like to do. So I, I pressed towards kind of the, the bigger square that doesn't have any, have any seams I have to worry about. That way, when these two, two rows become a solid block, it'll nest right there in the middle. Okay, so let's make four of the flying geese chevrons and four of the corner half square triangles plus the blocks. 
and I'll see you in just a bit. I'll take a few pictures as I go to, and then uh, I'll take a picture of the back of my block so you can see all of my pressing as well. To the sewing machine. So we got all the blocks, all the chevrons from the flying geese and the cute little corners here. Let's talk about putting these together. You'll see in the instructions and it says you're going to make two of these rows, the top and the bottom. Just be sure you're paying attention to the rotation of the corner pieces so that you rotate them the correct way. And then the one middle strip here in the second. Now there's a bunch of things that I want you to, to look out for and I'm going to show you what I do. You see these lines right here going from the chevrons into, we'll call this like a little flower bud corner. That's supposed to be a nice straight line so those are very important points to watch out for and you'll see it happens several times in the block. So let me show you what I do. I'll grab a couple of the pieces. So there's, we're going to pretend these are these two pieces right here. What I like to do is I take one piece, grab a pin, and I'm putting it right through that cross mark where the two seams meet because that's the, the little quarter inch right there. And then it meets up right here. I aim for the next one to aim right through and it should be going through that seam right there, which it is, that's perfect. Now we know that that pin, that mark right there, if it's completely, you know, level and straight up, that's going to be the perfect quarter inch, right? Now you'll notice that my block's a little bigger on the bottom than it is on the top, but that's okay because I'm interested in getting that line. So I'm actually going to take a couple other pins and just make sure that the, my, my center point doesn't move and put a pin on either side so that when I take this over to the sewing machine, nothing's going to move. And I'm going to have this part on top, I'm going to sew down my quarter of an inch and I'm going to aim for where that pin is and take it out and take the pins out while I'm sewing so that I get that nice crisp little kind of line that runs through both of those blocks. And I'm doing that at each of those. So whether I'm making the rows first or putting the rows together to make the final block, I am putting pins in just like you see there. A couple other things I want to point out that are also important. When you go to put the rows together into the final block, remember that this is going to be an important point to meet right there around that pretty orange block. And then you'll, of course, you have, like we just talked about, you'll have those same points on the rows as well. One more thing before I let you go is let's talk about pressing and the instructions they don't give a whole lot of instruction about how to press or which way to press so it is completely up to you what you're most comfortable with you can see what i've done here is i have opened up the seams both when making the rows and then putting the rows together in that final block now there's a lot of controversy about whether or not you should open seams because some people will tell you that that's a weaker um, part of it's a weaker method of sewing uh, the idea is that the block can be pulled apart. Um, but the upside to it is, man, does it get nice and flat because it takes out a bunch of that bulkiness at some of these bigger places where we have a lot of, of fabric meeting. So it makes it nice and flat so that when I press it, I get nicer, crisper points. And there's a lot of points in this block. So do what you feel best. If you want to completely copy what I'm doing and open these seams, that's fine. If you like to just uh, press to one side or the other, that's okay too. I just want you to be comfortable and I'm showing you what I'm doing with this block. All right, so I'm going to get off and make a, get all these pieces put together. I'll take a few snapshots in between and we will meet you at the end with a finished block. We'll see you in just a bit to the sewing machine. Alright, 
so there it is, the last block. Remember, we're making two of them. Let me just turn them over so you can take another peek at the back, see all my pressing and all that fun stuff. Very nice. Give these guys uh, a nice press. Maybe use a little best press or your favorite type of starch or sizing. And yeah, great job. Finish with month two. So I hope you join me with month three and see where the adventure takes us next. Thanks for tuning in. Give me the full thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe so you won't miss any of these videos. And I'll see you in month three. Bye-bye and keep quilting.